Hey, I'm Janine and this is Janine Sews. This is actually a preamble to my regular video that I recorded a few days ago. And the topic today is scrap busting. It would be completely wrong of me to not mention face masks as a project for using up your scraps. Here at the end of March, 2020, COVID-19 is something that we are all dealing with. And um, one of the best ways to bust some scraps is to make up face masks. There are so many different patterns and groups and websites. So I'm going to link them down below. And if you would like to make some face masks, either for healthcare organizations or just for your family or friends, you can check out those websites because they've already described everything way better than I can. This is my favorite. So I uh, just wanted to mention that before we go on with the regular video and I hope you'll stay. It's a quick little video with several other ideas that are really great for scrap busting. And it would also be fun projects for you to do while you're at home or maybe if you're learning to sew or friends or family who are there with you at home are interested in learning how to sew. Thanks and please keep watching. Hi, I'm Janine and this is Janine Sews. On this channel, I talk about the fun and challenges of sewing a wardrobe for a woman over 50. I know that some of you have stumbled upon my channel today for the first time as part of the Sew Ask Me Anything vlog hop. So I'm just going to give a really brief overview of who I am for those of you who have not watched my channel before. So on this channel, I just show you what I'm doing, what I'm learning, I'm not an expert, I'm just sharing with you how much I love sewing. Occasionally a cat will come by, but I try to shoo them away because they tend to be a distraction. So I'm going to shoo this distraction away and I'll be right back. So for today's vlog hop, several of us who have less known sewing YouTube channels are all answering a question. So ask me anything. And the question that I'm answering today is, what are my favorite stash busting projects? And I do have one stash busting project I do all the time. As you saw, I have a cat. We actually have two cats. We've had dogs. We love animals. And when I started sewing again in 2015, I had to really start rebuilding my skills. And I happened upon a site, a page on Facebook called the Quilt Pattern Magazine Kennel Quilts. T Q P M Kennel Quilts. And on that Facebook page, they listed humane societies, shelters, rescue organizations that were in need for small pads that could be placed into pets' kennels. Typically, these are organizations that are responding to a natural disaster of some type. So I was intrigued by this when I found their Facebook page, went out and read their information, and they actually provided some very detailed, very good instructions on exactly what was expected of a kennel quilt. I'm going to link down here, and I'm also going to insert some pictures of different kennel quilts that I've made along the way but I want to very quickly show you how to make a kennel quilt in case you don't want to be bothered going out to their website. Kennel quilts are a specific size and with very specific fabric. Kennel quilts finished size is 12 inches by 18 inches, so it's the same size as a placemat. They're always made of cotton fabrics and they're lined with cotton batting. The reason for that is they want to make sure that whatever little animal is sitting on the quilt would not be at risk for a reaction to some chemicals, um, treatments that are on fabrics. So 
I always pre-wash the fabric and then I always use cotton batting, which is their suggestion. Some people who make kennel quilts actually quilt them. And if you would like to learn how to quilt on the information on the kennel quilt website, they give you some very simple quilting patterns that you can try. So when I was first sewing again, and I started making these, the first thing I focused on was very basic rectangular quilts. This is a half size one that I've just made up to demonstrate for you. And I liked this project because I had to learn to A, cut things straight and to the right dimension, working with a rotary cutter, which was new to me. And then I also had to sew straight lines or at least attempt to sew straight lines. So I made a lot of kennel quilts at first. I've probably made over the last five years, a hundred kennel quilts. And every time I just find it's a very soothing and zen-like experience because you basically cut the fabric the right size. And again, this is half size. So normally you would cut two pieces of fabric, 19 inches by 13 inches. You sew around the edges, three of the edges, with a half inch seam allowance. Then you cut a piece of batting, the finished quilt size, so 12 inches by 18 inches. And you really just place it and turn it inside out, or right side out. Poke out the corners with your little poker. Then I normally press it, make sure that the batting is relatively smooth and then I just stitch around the edges. So this is all stitched all around the edges, except it's open at the one end so I can show you that I just press under the half inch seam allowance and stitch all around. Then the other thing you can do that's kind of fun with this, which is again, another practice experience, is sew some designs on this, anything to keep the batting from moving. So I'm just gonna quickly do this and show it to you. So I just did a little bit of stitching on here to keep the batting from moving when the kennel quilt is washed. Because of course these will be washed. I believe that a lot of the shelters that take these give them to the adoptive parents when the puppy or the kitty or the gerbil or guinea pig or whatever goes home. So. Um, they have to be washable. Um, I always make a point of really trimming any th loose threads very well. And although I normally sew with a three millimeter stitch, on these I normally stitch with a two and a half millimeter stitch, just because you don't want little claws to get in and catch on anything. So, that's a half size kennel quilt. And you know, you could actually use this if you wanted, if you, if you just had a little bit of fabric, you could use the same technique to create something like a, a hot pad. Um, you can also make placemats the exact same way. And I have made plenty of placemats the same way. But again, this is a really great stash buster the animals don't care if the fabric doesn't match. So if you have one piece of cotton for one side and something else that does not match on the other side, the animals don't care. So it's a great way to use up you, um, a lot of your stash that way. The only thing you wind up purchasing is the cotton batting. Now another project that I've recently started doing is just regular pet beds. 
Um, I'm a member of a sewing guild chapter, the one in Atlanta, and we had a pet bed sewing bee on February 29th this year. And we made 80 pet beds that were donated to a local shelter. And these pet beds were completely different from the kennel quilts because these are beds for big animals. So the directions that the shelter gave us was to cut either 12 inch, 24 inch, 36 or 48 inch square beds. That's a lot of fabric. Some people used upholstery fabric. They had leftover upholstery fabric and that was fine to use. Just wash it first if you have something like that because again, you don't want an animal lying on something where there's a lot of chemicals or sizing or treatment on a fabric. And these also have to be able to handle being thrown in the wash on hot water. So you can use anything at all that you have, but if you have scraps, it's um, there are two ways to use your scraps. First, you can use them to make the outside of the bed. But something that we did when we made these bigger pet beds in particular, is we took fabric scraps and we cut them up into just little pieces and we actually used the scraps to stuff the beds. It's amazing how quickly you can get rid of a big stack of mismatched scraps by filling up a pet bed, especially a 36 inch pet bed. And I know that some people, when we were first working on it, some people said, oh, that really seems kind of lumpy. And it is a little bit lumpy, but we all know that dogs like to dig. So if you give them a pet bed where they can get in there, they can move things around and create their own little nest, they'll be really happy. So don't be afraid to use fabric scraps that are just cut up in a pet bed. You could even take, if you've got some clothes that are too nasty to go to the charity shop, you could cut them up, especially things like fleece, cut them up and use them to stuff a pet bed. Now, of course, pet beds, you don't have to be this perfect with them. So what we did for the exterior of the pet beds, this is one that I've got three quarters done. These are even more simple than the kennel quilts because on these, we just surged around the outside. So this is the right side and I've just surged on the outside. And then the other thing I did is I just stitched a little cross section in the middle so that some of the stuffing would stay where it's supposed to be. Um, but I'll show you how we stuff these up. Now I don't have enough fabric scraps because honestly, when we did the pet bed sewing bee, I probably used 20 pounds of fabric scraps. But this is what it will be like when you stuff it. So a little bit lumpy and bumpy. Um, what I would do if I was finishing this now is I would just add in a little bit of batting so that it's done. Or I'd have it beside, you know, honestly, if you're working on a project, you could have one of these pet beds ready to go and just have this beside your sewing machine. And when you have scraps, just throw them in. And when it's full, as full as you want it, stitch it up and it's done. Um, you'll notice that I have the serger, the serged ends here. You can just tie those in a knot and tie them off. Again, you just wanna be aware that some little claw can't get into something and pull it open. So those are my stash busting projects. I don't know why I have so much trouble saying that. Stash busting projects. So either little kennel quilts or big pet beds. Um, my regular video will be up again in a few days. Um, I'm getting a fair bit of sewing done now that I'm working from home, but I am actually working from home. I do have to actually work. I can't just be in the sewing room all day. So um, I've got a couple of garment projects that I'm about to cut. Uh, being very aware that I wanna make things that I can wear to work from home. I was gonna make a dress, but I probably wouldn't wear that to work from home. So I think I'm gonna look at some tops. So that's Janine Sews for today for part of the So Ask Me Anything vlog hop. And if you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll subscribe. If you're a regular subscriber, 
and I know you were expecting to see some garment sewing, stick around, I'll have some more. And in these trying times, I am an eternal optimist. I know everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. We're gonna have an interesting few weeks. Maybe we'll have an interesting spring and summer, but everything's gonna be okay. Take care. I'll see you really soon.